everyone, Pam Gregory, astrologer. I'm going to be speaking to you today about the first half of September and the full moon that we have in Pisces on the 1st or the 2nd, depending on where in the world you live. Now, we've got some quite complex energy happening through this month, and indeed, the energy is really going to build through the rest of this year. Probably November will be a, a real peak, but it's going to be like a crescendo, really. Building, building, building with a lot of intensity, a lot of fast-moving events, a lot of things happening out there in the world. So I'm going to be just reminding you some of the major themes that we're going to be seeing through these uh, next few months. Now, Mars is in its own warrior sign of Aries. It normally stays in a sign six to eight weeks. It's staying in Aries until well, six months in total until January 2021. It is coming together with Eris repeatedly. Eris, goddess of discord and chaos, female awakener, also in Aries, coming together repeatedly and squaring the planets in Capricorn, Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto. So, Big theme for the coming months, we're into it right now, is Mars in Aries representing individual power, freedom, a need for individual sovereignty. Mars in Aries doesn't like to have to check in with anyone. It's, is it okay if I do this? They just like to go do it. They're very solo, they're very pioneering. But in the square that Mars and Eris have to the Capricorn planets. Capricorn is about government, institutions, corporations, and Saturn and Pluto in particular are about power and control, law and order, rules and regulations. So the square aspect is where we always have a conflict. So we have individuals demanding more freedom, demanding to be heard, taking to the streets, but running up against the um, repressive policies and power of governments. Now, we've been seeing this all over the world. We've been seeing it very strongly in the US. We've been seeing it recently in Lebanon and also in Belarus, where I believe in those two countries it isn't just toppling the leaders, it's toppling the entire political system. So this is about the collapse of the old order, which I've discussed many, many times, because Pluto is moving through Capricorn until 2024. I'm going to be talking about that theme until then, really. And although it's very uncomfortable on the 3D level, it is meant to be happening. Astrologers would be surprised if it wasn't happening in some way. And because the collapse of an old paradigm is never tidy or easy, yes, it's going to feel very uncomfortable and noisy. And if anything, it's going to get louder and noisier. There's, there's strong yang energy here. So take a look at your own chart, see where the sign of Aries falls, which house area it falls in. That's going to be super energized for you for the next few months. See where Capricorn falls in your chart. You, you will already be aware of this with Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto having already entered that some time ago. And in fact, the last 10 degrees of any cardinal sign, Aries, Cancer, Libra, Capricorn, is super activated. Whether it's a planet or an angle, you're going to feel the activation of this square. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, you can download a free birth chart from my website. If you go to this link above, that will take you to my store you buy a two-part tutorial video series. And that will explain how you find these um, degree points in your own chart and what it means for you. So if you have a, what does this mean for me question, that's where you go. Because I I'm obviously can't know everyone's chart. So... This is power battles and issues of control. But in, in, the, in the process of that, it is also bringing down the old order. So when people take to the streets, that is part of that process. So when it, I think the other thing that's important to say before I leave um, the Mars energy particularly, Mars is going to go stationary retrograde on the 9th of September. So round about the time any planet moves stationary and changes direction, we feel the symbolism of that planet more strongly. So think of Mars in Aries. It's about impulsivity, it's about aggression, it's about assertion. It's all of those things. Now it's much better if we can turn it 
turn that impulse, that kind of gut reaction inwards and turn it into courage and inner power and what I call hero energy. It's much more useful when we've got that inner sense of power and if that becomes our reference point rather than the, the scattering of outer events. But nevertheless, the symbolism will be strong around the 9th. Mars then goes retrograde until the 13th of November just over two months. That, of course, will span the US election period as well. So when Mars is retrograde, this is going to be quite complicated energy because it is closer to the Earth. In fact, when Mars was, was retrograde in 2018, and it wasn't even in Aries then, it was in Capricorn and Aquarius, in the Northern Hemisphere, we had um, a heat wave and many heat-related deaths at that time. So we feel the heat of Mars, if you like, the symbolism of Mars more strongly when it's retrograde. However, for some people, when it's retrograde, you might slightly lose a bit of energy or slightly lose enthusiasm for a project you're working on in that house area where you have Aries in your chart. But for, for many people, they may feel it even more intensely. So be aware of that. Try not to express it in a scattered outer way. Try to turn it inward so you've got a clear sense of self, sovereignty, inner power and courage because that's going to serve you well in the coming months. Now we have our full moon at 10 degrees 12 minutes Ices. This happens on the 1st of September at 10.21 p.m. Pacific and it happens the next day the 2nd at 6.21 a.m. UK time. Now, whenever we have a full moon, it indicates some kind of closure or culmination or completion in that area of life where 10 degrees of Pisces falls. And again, check that out in your own chart. It is usually also a time at a full moon where we can get revelations of things we didn't know before. Full moon shines a light into dark corners. And that is particularly emphasised at the moment because the ruler of Pisces, Neptune, is square to the nodal axis. It's going to become exactly square in January. Neptune has a lot to do with secrets or things not being as they seem or even deception in some senses. But when we have a full moon, it can shine a light on those secrets of, of whatever kind. So we may have more revelations, we may have more disclosures at this time. And whether those disclosures are around any corruption or um, even something galactic, it doesn't really matter. It's the truth coming out and the truth is part of this collapse of the old order. So Pisces energy is incredibly sensitive. It's incredibly compassionate. So when we have a full moon, feelings tend to come to a head, particularly when it's a water sign, water is emotion, particularly when it's a sign as sensitive as Pisces. So there's going to be a lot of emotion happening at this time. We could have a lot of compassion for people in the world. And yes, at a lower level, it can express that Pisces and Neptune energy can express as overwhelm or confusion with everything that's going on. Yes, it can be floods and tsunamis. It can express as that at that level. But it has a much, much finer level of being that I want to come back to a little bit later in this video. But I really want to talk about some of the more obvious cardinal energy in at this full moon before I get to that. So let us look at some of the aspects at this full moon. One of the important ones is Venus at 25 of Cancer is exactly opposing Saturn at 25 of Capricorn and Pluto at 22 of Capricorn. Now, particularly if Venus falls in your fifth or seventh house of relationships, this can often manifest in relationships as a conflict between the need for security and safety and coziness, things, keeping things as they are in the home, and yet a strong sense of control or dominance perhaps coming from the partner and having quite a push-pull with that, whether you stay within the security of that relationship despite that. And it's really, again, a power battle on the personal level. It's a power dynamic struggle there. So be aware of trying to readjust the dynamics if you're feeling that. We could see some quite strong changes in currencies at that time because Venus also represents currencies. So 
be aware of that round about the time of this full moon. Now, in fact, it isn't just the opposition between Venus and Cancer and Saturn and Pluto. This actually becomes a cardinal grand cross because we've just talked about Mars and Eris in Aries, square to Jupiter, Saturn, Pluto, and they are also square to Venus at 25 of Cancer. And we have Homer, wonderful dwarf planet of fertility, abundance, at 26 of Libra on that fourth corner. So it's a cardinal grand cross, very strong configuration. So really what this is about is the is the is power dynamics of every kind, the collapse of the old order in a very obvious way, day to day in terms of what's happening in the world, our foundations really being stripped away from what we've known in a lifetime. There could be issues in relationship, but the birth of the new is the promise of Homer. Talked about Homer in past videos. She has this shamanic, spiritual, instinctive connection to nature. She's about abundance, fertility. She can produce food from the seas and the land. And she really, I really saw her archetype in evidence in the first lockdown when the skies were clearer and wildlife was appearing everywhere. We have beautiful clear blue skies, certainly in the northern, where I, where I live in England, but wildlife was just appearing everywhere because people were were in lockdown and it was it, it was amazing how fast that happened so there's just se this sense of regeneration that is ready to burst through as the old collapses that's the promise of the new some of the the beauty we can start to see in nature okay so that's the cardinal grand cross we also have a very um positive trine between the Sun at 10 of Virgo and Uranus at 10 of Taurus. So this is shining a light on Taurus, on, on Uranus. Now, Uranus is also the planet of freedom. It's also the planet of awakening. So it's going to add to that whole theme of people wanting to be free. They don't want constraint. And they are awakening to what's actually going on in the world. And that is increasing their demand for freedom. And that's going to grow and grow in the coming months. Uranus is also innovation, technological innovation of many kinds. And I'd like you to be very aware and alert of magnetics, magnetism, because I think we're going to hear an awful lot about magnetic technology new technology connected to magnetism, which is life supportive and life enhancing. So have your antennae out for that because Uranus is in Taurus, Taurus is the earth and Taurus is also our physical bodies. So if we could develop technology like that, it would, it would change a lot of things very, very quickly. We are electromagnetic beings, remember. So be aware of um, that side of Uranus, but also our values are going to be changing a lot. Uranus is going to stay in Taurus till 2026. Values are going to be changing a great deal. I think our values even in a few months have changed for everybody versus where they were just at the beginning of the year. But this is also about extreme Earth events. And this is cosmologically... This is also a huge shift. Now, I've talked about many of these things before, but just to remind you, it isn't just the, the astrology we can see very clearly with the, with the shift of the old, the collapse of the old. Cosmologically, the Earth is moving through the photon belt right now. We'll do for another, I think, couple of hundred years. So more light is coming into the Earth plane, into our physical bodies. There's a huge drop in the magnetic shield of the earth because the earth has spun well our whole solar system has spun out of this area known as the magnetic cloud another reason more magnetic and and cosmic galactic energy can get through that is upgrading the earth and indeed the entire galaxy it's upgrading us on a on an ongoing basis it's shifting the earth's energy lines and that is measurable shifting the energy of the earth and, and and our bodies and the earth have to match as it were so 
we are also likely to see, with this drop in the magnetic um, shield of the Earth, we're likely to see more coronal mass ejections happening and also more extreme Earth events where uh, apparently there's a link between a lower magnetic shield and things like earthquakes, volcanoes, etc. Now we've had a lot of those recently, particularly in the middle of August, when Uranus, planet of earthquakes and volcanoes, became stationary retrograde. Its symbolism strengthened. But in general, we're going to be seeing more of these. Eruptions, earthquakes, volcanoes, etc. So we're going through a whole, as I say, cosmological Gaia transition at this time. That's why this whole shift is so enormous. Okay, so coming back to this Sun at 10 of Virgo, trying to Uranus at 10 of Taurus. It's also another major configuration, a, a grand trine in Earth, because both the Sun and Uranus are trying to Jupiter at 17 of Capricorn. It's a grand trine in Earth. These are considered quite lucky, and in Earth they're particularly about manifestation, how we can manifest our wishes. Now, this feels particularly lucky with the Sun, Uranus, Jupiter, because Jupiter gives us bigger horizons to, to envisage. Uranus is always the jump, the quantum jump. Like Homer, the jump in evolution. It isn't linear, it isn't gradual, it's a jump in our understanding and a jump in our evolution. And both Jupiter and Uranus are connected to freedom. So this feels very positive, but because of its manifesting power, there's something else at this full moon that helps us. Mercury is really strongly aspected here. Mercury is in its own sign of Virgo. It's at 24 of Virgo, so it's in a tight trine to Saturn and Pluto in Capricorn. It's all great for manifesting again. It's also opposing Neptune in Pisces, imagination. So this combination of aspects is really about bringing our, dreaming our thoughts into reality, dreaming our thoughts into manifestation. And if you think of how an architect works, if he's thinking of, uh, of planning a, a new house, he has an idea in his imagination. It's just in the ether. And he draws that up on paper and then it eventually becomes bricks and mortar, becomes a real house. It manifests. And so this is the process and I think it's very helpful to keep that, um, to keep that architect's process in mind in terms of how all of us, consciously or unconsciously, are manifesting. And another thing with this, it was interesting the other day, an amazing man called Viktor Frankl, who some of you may have heard of, came to mind. He was imprisoned in, in just a un, unforgivable, in unimaginable conditions in a Nazi concentration camp in, in World War II. And heroically, he wrote a book about the search for meaning. And one of the things he said there, that although you know, he was stripped of everything in that concentration camp, he still had the freedom of his thoughts, the freedom of his thinking. And it came to me because I think when we're in very constrained circumstances in varying ways across the world, to become more aware of your, the freedom of your thoughts and the freedom of your choices. And one thing I've started to do, just in, in micro ways through my day, I've tried to become more conscious that I have the freedom to choose. I choose to get up now. I choose to brush my teeth now. I choose to have my breakfast now. I choose to make this phone call now, etc., etc. But instead of just kind of doing everything in a blur through the day, to become more conscious that I have the freedom in that choice, and I am grateful for that. Freedom, choice, gratitude. Freedom, choice, gratitude. And if that can become a kind of rolling theme through your days, you shift your frequency and you start to broadcast freedom as opposed to constraint. And that would really help everybody because that's what we're broadcasting to the field and that becomes infectious for everybody. So, some strong configurations happening here. But let's come back to this very different energy of Pisces, this full moon at 10, 12 of Pisces, because it's so different from the yang, kind of more masculine, manifesting energy in the world, because 
Pisces is exquisitely sensitive. It's to do with unconditional love. It's yin, it's receptive. It's to do with meditation, altered states, chanting, sacred music, sitting in nature, being in silence, listening to the birds and the silence beyond the birds. It is, it is so fine in its perception. It's really magical and I think of, when I'm thinking about Pisces energy, uh, Neptune rules Pisces and in myth, as I've mentioned in a previous video, in myth the wife of Neptune was Salassia, mermaid energy, that iridescent, shimmering light quality. It's not solid, it's intangible, you know, it's the reflections of light on the sea and it's shape-shifting. And when we're in that state, that Piscean altered high vibration state, we are less particle in quantum terms, we are more wave. And that is a much more powerful place to co-create from than density and forcing and pushing. Because our bodies are literally more wave. They lose some of the density. So think of this, this magical, dreamy quality. Really get into that at the full moon. Can you sit in the moonlight if the weather's okay to do that? Can you dream? Can you blur with starlight and moonlight? Because one of the other wonderful things about Pisces energy is it goes beyond polarity. It goes beyond yes, no, good, bad, right, wrong, left, right. It's just noise. And because Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac and be the, can be the most egoless sign. They don't get into the fight very often. I mean, I have sun, moon, Pisces, so I'm very aware that, you know, if I get the odd person come out <coughs> on social media, it, it just doesn't really bother me very much. You know, I, I, and I try also hard, despite my vast experience, I try hard not to have an ego invested in, I have to be right. I have to be right about this. I try and get into my Pisces energy, just let it go. Because with Pisces, everything is connected to source. Everything is just an aspect of oneness. Everything and everyone is just a divine spark in oneness. Just let it go, it doesn't matter, it's just noise. And if we can get more to, to that place on an ongoing basis, and believe me, you know, I have to work at that too. But if we can, that is a, a beautiful antidote, if you like, to all the, the, the yang energy. But it just instantly gets us to a place where we become, and we are aware of becoming, a multidimensional light being a multi-dimensional light being, because that's what we are. And increasingly, we are going to know that that's what we are. We're not just galactic citizens. We are multi-dimensional light beings. Now, I feel personally these next few months are crucial. If I look at the astrology, I've never seen such concentrated astrology in my life. And so this gives us an incredibly powerful opportunity for accelerated evolution. And I want to say this really strongly because it isn't the kind of thing where we can say, oh, you know, I'll get around to that next year. We're in it. This is it. And so we have no choice that the old is collapsing. We're, we're in it. We can see it. But what are we going to create that's new? Because consciously or unconsciously, whatever state we are in today is our tomorrow. Our frequency today is our, free, is our manifestation tomorrow. It's no Chinese proverb that, proverb that says that. So if we can become more conscious of, of creating something really beautiful together, Aquarian energy, one heart, one mind, rise together, all of us, to create something absolutely magnificent for us all because this is the crucible. This is the very noisy, hot, disruptive, uncomfortable crucible that we are in for the next few months. But I, 
know in my bones we are going to get into a better place. But the speed at which we do that and the degree to which we do that is down to every single one of us. <laughs> so I hope I haven't lectured you too vigorously here, but um, I hope some of this has been helpful to you and really enjoy this full moon in Pisces. It's going to be really beautiful. And if you'd like more information about my books, my teaching videos, my very long monthly newsletter, just go to my website, pamgregory.com. And in the meantime, thank you so much for listening. Bye for now. Thank you.